Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lunchtime Detroit Lions Talk. It's brought to you by the Detroit Lions on the Prowl and the Belly Up Sports Network. We got one leaving and one coming in today. So big breaking news uh, from yesterday. But first, let me bring in my main man, the man of steel himself, Kurt Steele. What up, though? Welcome to the show, people. You know who we are. We are Detroit Lions on the Prowl, baby. You're home for Detroit Lions news and rumors. We got your main course. We know we got the big breaking news. And we got the rest of the undrafted free agents. You know, we got Detroit Lions on the Prowl trivia. We got your comic cards and dessert with your man, Kurt. But first, we got to bring in the who the third member of the team. Who is it? Mike Jones. Who? Coach Mike Jones. What's going on, Lion fans? Let's get this thing started. Right now. Let go. It's Detroit Lions talk, baby. We're going to get up, and on the way up, we're going to buy the kneecap off. Yes, sir. We in the deep. Welcome back to Detroit Lunchtime Lions Talk. And uh, Jim got some special news, Jim. It, it shocked us all. What you got for us? It, it, shocked, it shocked me at the timing. It didn't shock me they were going to get rid of him. The writing was on the wall for Carry On Johnson once we got Jamal Williams. The Detroit Lions wave running back Carry On Johnson. I think this is more of a favor to him because uh, that he can catch on with another team. He does not have the Dan Campbell bite the kneecaps love for football. I, I, I don't see it in him, and I haven't since he got here. Guy, He had injuries, and I think that took him out too. But my first take on this is I don't think Carryon Johnson loved football. I don't. Uh, okay. There's just a bunch of things that I saw in him early, a lot of injuries, but it, there was just other things, the work ethic I didn't think was there. But uh, what do you got, Kurt? All right, I totally disagree with you on this one. This one, uh -oh. I ain't got your back on this one, bro. The guy, the guy busts his behind to get back and forth from injury. So the guy has to love football to do that. Um, yeah. And I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I, I follow him on, I, I follow him on social media on like on multiple platforms, and he had an argument with some people last year uh, about that because when he first came in the league, he was posting all his workouts down at Auburn, and then. You know, you know, life happens and, you know, things, uh, things go, you know, he got injured and I agree with the injury part. Cause I think the injury was the writing on the wall for him, but you don't bust your behind time after time after time. I mean, he was always ready when the season started. He was, he came into camp, he was in shape just because he didn't post the grind doesn't mean the grind wasn't happening. So I had to agree, disagree with you on that one. He had a nasty argument with some fans last off season about the same thing. Well, you don't love the game. Cause I don't see you working out. He said, just cause I, I don't post my workouts. I mean, I'm not working out. Yeah. You know, he just chose to, and I think that that was, that really pissed him off. And that's why he stopped posting his workouts because people were like, well, you're not posting all your workouts. Yeah. He's like, it, my right. thing to that is if he, was so, if he was so pissed off, why didn't he show it yet last year? I mean, uh, I mean, but here's here's my thing uh, with him. He he made himself into something. He knew his. He took his role, what his role was on the team. So he said, "Well, you're gonna make me the blocking running back, right? Well, I'm mm -hmm. gonna make myself the best running back, blocking running back in the entire NFL." So he took he, he took that role and was like, "Okay, uh, you know, I, I may not yeah. be the, you know the, the, the top running back on the roster anymore, but guess what? This is my role. You says what you want me to do, right? right? So I'm gonna be the best one of that that I can be." And he was right. tops in the league. Uh, you know, he was the top PFF blocking running back. Now, I would say this: with the writing was on the wall with Jamal Williams, because guess what? PFF score, uh, Carry On Johnson blocking running back, eighty four point eight. Jamal Williams. 80.4, I believe, is something like that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you you brought in somebody comparable. I just think the injuries was like, you know, Dan Campbell, those guys was like, look, man, we can't have this guy on the roster. He just keep, you know, the best of ability is what? Availability. availability. But I yeah. still think I, I'm going to stick by what I said. I mean, uh, I you're get, posting I mean, I pictures on the beach and you're, yeah. you know, doing all sort of I stuff. I mean, but you, food I mean, okay. I'm, know, I, is, I'm sorry. I just, that's what I saw on him. Thing, and that's, I'm going to stick to it. is about carry on is, um, one, two things, man. Uh, one, he did come in last season looking jack. He did. Um, you know, so he so he he embraced his new role, so to say. And and two, you know, um, 
this is the day that we come to now where if you where people like to older people like to like to downplay social media. But then again, if you don't post on social media, your workouts and you ain't doing nothing really. You know, so but that doesn't mean that though. I know. No, I know, I know, I know, but I'm just saying I'm saying like, you know, you ain't doing nothing if you ain't posting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then just like man, that that's sad because a lot of people are black people are private. They don't really like people to be all in their business. They feel like the off season is their time with their mm-hmm. family. They'll do what they do. They got they got trained they're millionaires, but you know, it just yeah, it's 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 a sad day, man. But I, I don't know. I think Carry on just got tired of putting in the work and then the Lions um not being good. He wasn't no you I mean last year when Kerry, he was running the ball, he was not very good. Yeah, he wasn't he wasn't that good, but I mean, do you really want to keep going through injury and rebuilding yourself for an organization that was going that was trending downward? I think no, it, I, mean, I think it I think it speaks to something else too. I don't think we're going to be taking running backs very high anymore. Oh, I, that's a that's a league wide trend. It I is. mean, right. I mean, it, I mean, that's just. I mean, besides, I mean, what we have two in the first round this year, and look how. I mean, look as great of a running back as Najee Harris is. I mean, look where where he was drafted. You know, what mm-hmm. I'm saying uh, that bottom of the you know mid to bottom of that first round. It's just. I mean, it is what it is. But I, I would say this. Uh, I wish him well. I'm not even one of yeah. those guys that's gonna, you know, I'm not even tip the way in the way out guy with this guy. I I like carry on. Uh, I just think that his injuries really played his career. I mean, a lot of p- people didn't even like the pick when we picked carry on Johnson because of the injuries he had in college. So um, he's gonna have to um, definitely, uh, but he's going to be. It's gonna be a market for him. There is going to be a market for him just yeah. because of the oh, fact yeah. of his blocking ability. I mean, that's a that's hard to come by in the NFL. And like I say, he reinvented himself. He took that challenge and said, okay, you want me to be a blocking running back? That's what you want me to do? I'm going to be the best one of that that I can be. Um, okay. I mean, I know, don't, I'm not going to disagree with you there. All I'm going to say is he's just not, I don't think he's a Dan Campbell type of guy. He may not, not, now that I may agree with you on, he may not be. Um, but some people may look at a couple of players on this team. That makes, I think the writing's on the wall for a lot of players right I now. I do too. So uh, I think that one of those linebackers think, too that I got my yeah, eye on is Jamie I, I think, Collins. Yep. I think that the culture, if you're not with us, if you're not with us, you got to go. If you if right. this ain't what you do about, um, and it's a couple of defensive linemen, um, mm-hmm. I think it may be with his contract, if his contract wasn't so big, you know, you you and your, you know, I know you have this thing with uh, with um with the big fella Trey Flowers, you know he's got that kind of laid back Southern attitude. Now he's a he plays yep. hard on the field, but you know he it may be one of those things where he may be like, okay, you know, if it wasn't for your contract, you're behind to be going too. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think that um, I think they're going to rebuild this entire team. I think a lot of yeah. the players that we not, like are going to go. It's not going to look yeah. anything like this roster is going to be a, a complete turnover. It's not yeah. going to look anything like, you know, what we currently saw in the last couple of years. And, um, yeah, on but this it has roster. to. This team was oh, terrible. Yeah. This team right. defense was You're historically right. bad. So, I mean, you the, know, I mean that's crazy. Or maybe, maybe I mean, the, the players, worst defense. <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. Maybe the players' attitudes will change. You know, maybe yeah. some of the players will be kept, but I think their attitudes will change. And maybe they, they wanted their attitude to change, but they just didn't have the coach or the coaching staff to really spark it in them, you know? Because that's, that's a lot of things. Motivation mm-hmm. is a lot to do in football. Motivation I mean, can get a lot of guys going that mm-hmm. aren't that are kind of like on the border, and that motivation can put them up here. You yep. know what I'm saying? Yep. And, I mean, in their cool. effort. And, yeah, you know, you're so... Sure. Because we saw that this when uh, the interim coach took over at the end of the season last year, where Daryl Bevel took over. Yeah. I mean, they just weren't, you know, they, with the injuries killed the Lions last year. Mm-hmm. Of course, we know that, especially in that second end of the season. And then we had the where the COVID hit the coaching staff, and they couldn't yeah. be. I mean, we had. I mean, all right, all right. I think we had the guy from the concession stand number four uh, out there <laughs> coaching the running backs doing, <laughs> doing, that, doing that game against the against the Buccaneers. I mean, that's just. I mean, it is what it is, but. I mean, I, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, he just may not be the, the guy that fits the mold, but those injuries had to kill. I mean, it was like, you, you think about this. They drafted a running back, and then they signed two more and undrafted free agents. Uh, and did. then they signed Jamal Williams. I just think that carry-on was, wasn't going to be that 
it was like, ah, but and, and people are saying, well, oh, he's the best blocking running back on the team, but there's not a big drop off between him and Jamal Williams. It's just, it's just yeah, not, if not at all. And, I, and I think Jamal Williams runs better than carry on does now. Oh yes, definitely. And I think it's because of the knees or something like that. Hey, sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties, you know what I'm saying? It just happens, you know, it's, Hey, it's YouTube, it's TV, it's broadcast, whatever it is. Hey, uh, <laughs> we had a, a, a story, the return of one, Mr. Um, Darren Fells came back. He joined, rejoins the roster. He left in 2017. He had a good year in 2017 and then he was gone. I was like, why do we get rid of this guy? Well, he's back in the fold. Big guy, big blocking tight end, six foot seven. Now this is a reaction really to uh, the Josh Hill retirement. Uh, sure. You know, I like him in Honolulu Blue. The guy's huge. Uh, he's a good blocking tight end. So I'm, I like to see him back in the fold. And we have another tight end who has an NFL snap besides TJ Hawkinson. Mm, yeah, I like this. I like this too. Uh, six foot seven end zone threat. We know who he is and he can catch the ball too. He, he's an yeah. underrated pass catcher in my opinion. Oh, yeah. What do you got, Mike? Yeah. Man, uh, just, just his production the last two years in Houston, man. Um, I think, I think he, he's, uh, how do you say? I know he he's got a few years in the league, but he's definitely the um, evolved <laughs> evolved okay. into a a, a, a down the field kind of catcher. He's evolved into a red zone threat. The guy that we thought that he could be when he was here last time because of his size. So um, I'm excited, man. That now we got two huge monsters down there. And to, to control the middle of the field, to control the the, the end zone, the red zone, like man, yeah, and Campbell, you got, yep, <laughs> yep, and Brad Holmes. Yeah, Brad Holmes yeah. <laughs> what and you got Brad next, Holmes. Kurt? All right, we have five players. Now we will take this of what it is worth. Uh, this is coming from Pride of Detroit. Five players that can benefit uh, from the Lions' 2021 draft. Of course, first up, we got Jared Goff. Of course, with, with no brainer, Mister uh, <laughs> Mister Sewell coming over to the to the <laughs> roster. Jesus. Yeah, another one is DeAndre Swift. That's a no brainer as well. Same thing. Yeah, that's no brainer. With with the the Lions' new run, uh, new line is going to be open up the running lanes for him. Now, here's the here's one, the Lions' edge rushers. Now, with the addition of those two big monsters in the middle and the defensive tackles, uh, that's going to definitely help. With, because you have two pass rushing type of defensive tackles. So that's going to help those edge rushers get to the quarterback because you don't know who you, you can double team. So it makes it is going to either be Trey Flowers on one side or Romeo Aquara or Julian Aquara, whoever it is, they're going to have a, they're going to have a field day uh, coming up the and next Harris season. Too. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, Charles Harris. Yes. Charles. Now Harris. the other one, the other one is point older. Now here's the thing with him. They didn't. They didn't address that slot corner in the draft or uh, really undrafted free agency. Well, they have one guy that maybe, but that, I think that really solidifies him in that slot corner position uh, with his size and his just really overall um, play on his previous teams where he really excels at that position. So that that puts him in that starting slot corner type position and. The last one is, I know Jim ain't gonna like this one. <laughs> Good, you might might get a little chuck out of this one. The last one is Will Harris, the yeah. safety. Uh, they didn't address safety uh, except for in uh, was that undrafted free agency. So Will Harris, uh, I don't know about I'm that good. guy. I'm but, good. I, mean, I mean, go I ahead, Mike. Telling, I keep telling y'all, man, you can't, you can't take a, a, a strong safety and make him play free safety and expect a guy who's a box safety to play coverage. That just, you know, some guys can make that transition, but yeah. some guys can't. You know, they just, they, they, you know what I'm saying? They're programmed to do one thing, and that's what they can do, and that's, a, that's about 65% of the NFL. You can't yeah, get those I, guys to move to different positions. But, I mean, I, uh, so, yeah, I get you. Know, you. There, um, I get you. For Will Harris, I think it's going to be a prove it year for him. Uh, this oh, is not. this is his. Is, I think this is one of his last chances in Detroit. Uh, mm -hmm. That's just my opinion. But the other thing is, is I think we're going to go into undrafted free agency soon. But I think that they're looking for corners who can also play safety. They're going to interchange some of that. I think. 
I, I yeah. think they're going to run people out there at both positions. There are people mm-hmm. that they signed undrafted free agents that have played both mm-hmm. that um, feel comfortable playing both. And the size is about is, is about right for both yeah. safety and some corner. So yeah. it's it, they're mixing it, it up just a little bit. I think yeah. they just want versatility, just like you would have on the defensive yeah. front there too. I have yeah. something else uh, that was on XM Sirius Radio. Uh, okay. It Dan Campbell announced that they were going to run the three four defense, and it blew me away. I was like, okay, so we had uh, somebody else said they were going to run a four two five. Dan yeah. Campbell himself came on Sirius Radio and said that they were going to run a three four defense. So I'm I'm a little confused, but I think that I think they're going to be in nickel a lot more than they're going to be. In um, yeah, I think I don't, think that's what it is. I think don't we I have like five people. linebackers? Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <Next subject. laughs> but, no, but but um, but you have like a, a Julian Okora. You can you can play him. I mean, if you look at Eric Slay had to have the depth chart out there. Yeah. And you have some of these guys where they're moved out to the outside linebacker position. Right, so they're not, playing not, – not they're kind of playing the Will and ends. Sam kind of like edge rushers. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what they do. Yeah. So, well, yeah, that's what you do on on the uh, on a 3-4 defense. You know, your two mm-hmm. inside linebackers play off the ball linebacker, and then your two uh, overhangs kind of play yeah. – they kind of go in between. So, mm-hmm. you know, I mm-hmm. see it. I see it, but, man – The Jack and the Will linebackers, yeah. Um, yep, yep. Cool. We, we're doing that. Uh, you know, I would say this about that one. And I have a funny story about this. Um, about the cornerbacks who play, you can't switch a, a, a free safety to a, a box safety or a box safety to a free safety. My freshman year in high school, we had a huge running back. I was on a freshman team, and um, I played free safety where well, they moved me from corner to free to safety. And they, I was like, they tried to put me in the box, and I'm like, dude, I weigh like 115 pounds. This running back, was, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no. hey, like, get, get in there, stick your head in there. I'm like, who? I'm like, I'm like, this dude. I mean, this dude in high school. I mean, I mean, this is just in practice. That dude weighed. He was two of me. So I was like, I don't know about this one, guy. I mean, right. it's just is what it is. But I can see that where well, it's kind of hard to make that transition from either a free safety to a box safety or a box safety to a free safety. Yeah. Um, I will give Will Harris some reprieve, like Jim said though. Uh, this is it, player. I'm <laughs> out, so you better get right, it together. Nah. Yeah, <laughs> well, Harris is on the clock. He's on the clock. <laughs> All right, agree. the last the last news and rumors before we get to free agency is, I mean, the under the free agents is NFL free agent that Lions could target. And this is coming from All Lions SM uh, SI, excuse me, Sports Illustrated Fan Nation. Now we got five guys that they're, I mean, four guys that they said that the Lions sh- should target. And one's a very interesting name, and I'm gonna leave that name for last. First up, we have linebacker KJ Wright, good player, you know, out there coming from Seattle. Out there, uh, he hasn't signed yet. We talked about this guy before, defensive tackle Sheldon Richardson. We mentioned him before as well, you know, mm-hmm. with that price tag may be a little high for us. Uh, Malik Hooker. Now, this is one guy that I know that we. That's a very good pickup right there. He's a young guy uh, coming out of Indy, I believe. Um, I like that one. Just a guy that you know that could really fit this scheme, a uh, very well aggressive tackler as well for for our secondary, and the last one is can we get another return of a former lion? The last guy they said was that da 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 Golden Tate. Golden, I don't like. I'm not seeing that with the with it. the drafting of Amal Ross Saint uh, Saint Brown. I mean, shoot, we got a younger Golden Tate already on the right. roster. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't. I to be honest with you, I don't see what they they need in Shelton Richard, Sheldon Richardson right now. Um, yeah. I don't know how much he's going to cost, but we already have pretty good. Uh, we're already pretty strong defensive at defensive tackles. tackle. KJ right. Wright at linebacker. Um, I think they're going younger. Uh, I don't know that that's a possibility, Maybe. but I don't think so. Golden that's Tate, a possibility. Golden Tate Malik will never Hooker come is back. The name. Malik the name. Malik Hooker's the one I want. But yeah, I'm not right. so sure they right. get it. Yeah. Um, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure they have the the what it's gonna cost though because they, yeah oh no I don't, I don't yeah, think you, they do you, you you gonna put some some money on that on them books right there with when Lee Cooker right but I think you know what is one one guy who nobody ever talks about who I want to return to this team I think he has that Dan Campbell attitude I want Bo Scarborough back man oh man I that because I looked and I tell you, he's still a free agent he's only twenty four Bo. Scarborough, that dude, because I remember I remember me and my dad went to the Lions versus Cowboys game. 
okay? And the hit that he laid on Jalen Smith when he ran up the middle was so hard. The whole stadium was like, wow, like what just happened? No, he, that was most cars were running over linebacker Jalen Smith. That's what that was. So Mike, you Mike, you give me flashbacks. <laughs> Shawnee J was the two bows. That was his boys. The bow bar, the bow bow, and Bo Vince Wazo and Bo Scarborough. Yep. Um, I like Bo Scarborough. He's gonna be cheap. Yeah. He's gonna be I cheap. Like Bo Scarborough, yeah. but I think we got enough with, running backs right now. <laughs> but here's my thing with Bo Scarborough. He has the carry on Jackson syndrome. That dude stays hurt. That dude yep. stays hurt. He does, but he's good when he's healthy. He, he's but good when he's healthy. He that's, fits that's, the uh, mantra of the old lions, but. Oh, yeah, right. And our right. new Lions, they still do yeah, that. Uh, yeah, we got some some guys on the roster that came in a little bit. You know, let's get into up, these but... hidden gems for the uh, undrafted free agents. Who you Ooh. got first, Kurt? All right, for the the young fellas, we got first up. We have Jerry Jacobs, cornerback, Arkansas, five eleven, uh, two hundred three pounds. So he's a little shorter for the for the guy. Now he's he's one of those guys that fit the mantra. Uh, missed most of 2019 season with a torn ACL and opted out of the 2020 season after four games. Uh, his best season was in 2018. He started 11 of 13 games and, and recorded uh, 31 tackles, defended 12 passes, and notched four, count them, four INTs. Yeah, he looked pretty good uh, at Arkansas, but um, at that ACL is, is, uh, is a problem. Um, yeah. That's an issue. Yeah, he's he's a good cover corner, you know. I don't I don't got a whole lot more on him. Nah. But, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, who you got next, know. Mike? All right, Tommy Kramer okay. is a guard uh, okay. from Notre Dame, six five, three hundred seventeen pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, a first team all all ACC performer in twenty twenty. Kramer is mm -hmm. coming off shoulder surgery. Oh no. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, no. When healthy. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. In January. He's a big guard at 6'5", 309 pounds. Wow. And he and he has experience playing both right tackle and right guard at Notre Dame. On okay. him, yeah, on him I got a lot, actually. he He's a big, strong, mauler type, but they had him at right tackle. They shifted him into guard. He doesn't have a good bend. He is not really good with footwork. If he's between two guys that are really good, which he is, Ragnow and and Panay Sewell, he could be a starter. Um, but I, I think that I think he's a backup at this point. Um, but they are really going to have to work with his athleticism. He's so he's basically he's good. a Stenberg Junior. He's Stenberg Junior. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. okay. Okay, what you got, Jim? <laughs> Moving on. Got Javon Kinley. He's a wide receiver at Notre Dame, six foot two, two hundred and fifteen pounds. He uh, has had had injuries and stuff like this. He was arrested um, when he was twenty years old. I think he hit, he hit a police officer. Um, so I watched him play. Uh, I think he's okay. I think he fits the mold of what we want to do here, but um, just watch the injuries. That's uh, when healthy here. But I, I thought he had a good career at Notre Dame, mm -hmm. but kind of overshadowed there a little bit, I think. I didn't I didn't think he was great. I thought he was yeah. okay. He was one of the guys who went uh, known more for his size than really anything. Uh, he definitely, with the injuries, that he, he just got, like you say, he got overshadowed by the other uh, receivers on that roster. Yeah, injuries, no thank you. <laughs> I've got enough of that right nope. now. Nope. I mean, practice squad player, maybe, you know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next up, then this guy is interesting. Uh, I like the this one. Dietrich Mills, running back out of Nebraska, five foot eleven, two twenty. That's a Big beat boy. on the field right there. Average five yards per carry over his three year career. Uh, that started at Georgia Tech and ended in Nebraska. He was for 396 yards and 80 over 84 carries and three touchdowns in six seasons. Uh, excuse me, six games for last season for the Corn Huskers. You know, the, Nebraska just had a terrible season last year. They couldn't get on the field for COVID 19. So, you know, those numbers could have been better for him. But he's the guy I like to, you know, bring him in. He might make the roster just because of his goal line threat. I mean, that we wanted that big power back, you know, down there in the goal line. They stick, stick the ball in the end zone and that he fits that mold. 
at 5'11", 220. I he's mean, got he's he's got straight line. I mean, he gets to the hole quick. He, he's a mm -hmm. one step cut go. That's it. Okay. He has no twitch to him whatsoever. He he really doesn't make anybody miss too often. Maybe the first guy. That's about it. And then mm -hmm. it's straight line. But he he has an ability to get to that second level. And I think he could be a productive back for the Lions. Okay. He sounds like a battering ram. Yeah. Yep. He pretty okay. much is. But when he gets to a hole, he can get to it and and run through it quick. Right. Okay. He just doesn't do a lot of twitchy stuff. Right. I mean, hey, okay. you know, guys got roles, so you know that might you know, might not be his role. You so. gotta know your role, Jabroni. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that, Kurt. Uh so who we got next? We got AJ Parker, cornerback out of Kansas State. He's five foot eleven, 178 pounds. Parker recorded 120 tackles, 21 passes defended, and six interceptions as a three-year starter at Kansas State. From 2018 to 2020, he missed five games in 2019 due to a fractured ankle. He played both <laughs> in the slot. <laughs> I know, I know, he, I know. He played both in the slot and outside, so he's got some versatility to his game. He did. Man, he it, it was the... sounding real good yeah, until until, you, until I got to that fractured ankle. ankle part. I was like, oh, ooh, ooh. this I'm... is one of the guys that actually played safety a bit too, and uh, he said he could play any of the positions back there. Um, I question the I question the competition competition because of Kansas State, uh, mm, you know. But I watched yeah. him quite a yeah. bit. He, he has an eye for the ball. He's a ball hawk, but he will take chances and miss. Yeah, sure. and uh, if he has that issue too with the aggressive tackling, where yep, you know sometimes it's you know um, one of those. I mean, even going for misses. the ball, he'll miss and then yeah, miss. <laughs> um, and a person now, I haven't had a fractured ankle, but I've had recon I've had my tendons reconstruct in my ankle. Ouch. Ooh. Yeah, that that's not you know something like that is not a good deal. I have I wear a brace every day because it All just right. ain't right no more. <laughs> but Ooh. I'm an old man, so you know whatever you know. He, he, yeah, I, yeah, uh, I'm not twenty something years old. Uh, now, Jim, who you got now? I like this name right here. I guess it's Sherratt. Uh, Sherratt topped a uh, thousand receiving yards in 2019 before opting out of the 2020 season. He has a large frame at six foot two, 209 pounds. He had experience with both inside and outside at Wake Forest. I I like Sarat. I really do. But um, his difficulty is he gets no separation. And you would think he'd win more 50 50 balls than he does. Um, you know, he 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 doesn't even average 50 percent. Uh, 50 50 balls as far as i know per pff but um i i like the kid uh he's 6 3 really big um he's not fast but but he does have a tendency to be able to catch with one hand he can uh you know he gets separation sometimes but not often usually has a corner right on his hip but he seems to make the play quite a bit um no, i don't a, think he's, he's a kenny gallagher to me he's a younger a younger uh less less polished kenny gallagher maybe he'd have to win more 50 maybe. 50 balls for me and, and yeah. that's his that's his big thing I mean, i'm just saying but i was mm, surprised to find that out right um i i think he knows how to use his body he does. uh and and kind of shielding off or boxing out the guy he doesn't he mm. i don't think he he's good at at like at you know going up and grabbing it when somebody else is on him I but i think he's a good mm. box out guy so he's kind of like a quintess cephas in, in a little bit, but um, yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah. I mean, I know um, I, I watch ACC football. He was one of the bright spots besides the kicker on Wake Forest last year. I mean, you know, Sarah, you know, the first, you know, female to play Division One football. Uh, she was the kicker last year, but she, you know, Wake Forest didn't have a lot of bright spots on that roster anyway. On that team, you know I mean hell, it's ACC football. Uh, like I said, besides besides Clemson, uh, it's really trash anyway. Um. Well, he, well, Notre Dame played the ACC last year, but I don't really know count them because most they're mostly independent. So, um, well, but I mean, I mean, I do like Sage right. I mean, I think he has a tendency to uh, to make some good catches. I mean, he's a work in progress. Maybe he's a practice squad guy, or maybe he, you know, he gets with that coaching staff and works his way on the team. You know, the Randall L did wonder for for Brashad Perriman. So, uh, you know, he had his best years uh, under him. So. I, you know, you just never know. Uh, but 2000, with these young guys. 2019 was his breakout year at 1,006 yeah. yards, 11 touchdowns. But he was targeted 95 times and only caught it 65 times. That is not good. All right. No, <laughs> that, I mean, that could that could be partially him, partially his quarterback. We don't know who, I don't know who is throwing him the ball. 
Yeah. yeah. So, but re- but for, for, for somebody that, um, <clears throat> but for somebody that, that he has to win the 50, 50 ball, that, mm-hmm. that is my, right. that is my, and a lot of people really like Sage Sherratt. And I, I, I have him pretty high on my undrafted free agent board too, but you know, these mm-hmm. are just the things that I'm saying, take a bit of caution with the guy. Yeah. Right. Of course, temperate expectations. And last but not <laughs> least, oh, man, I just love his name. I mean, this guy should be on Wall Street and not playing football. Guy's name <laughs> is Brock Wright. Brock Wright. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a you know that's a you know good business name. He's a tight end out of Notre Dame. Big fella, big blocking tight end. Six foot four, two hundred and fifty five pounds. That's a big. That's some beef over there for mm-hmm. tight end. Uh, a big physical tight end who's mainly used as a blocker in Brian Kelly's offense. He caught just seven passes through his Notre Dame career. So basically, that he's a jabroni. He knows his role. He know he's coming in there to hit somebody. Put them on their back in the run game. So I couldn't I mean, disagree it's, it's more. That, I, mean, I couldn't. I couldn't disagree more about this guy. Yeah, I, uh, I think he wasn't used in this way, but he runs a oh, four six, and four, he six. is a big physical. He can catch the ball, but he can run after the catch. I watch this guy play, and mm-hmm. I'll tell you what. He wasn't used that way there, but don't sleep on this guy. He he actually mm-hmm. can catch the ball. He ran a four six. He has four six speed as a tight end at two hundred fifty five pounds. Wow. Disagree. I think he, I so, think he could so, be a player in in, in the uh, pass game. Okay, so Brian Kelly had the uh, he had some Matt Patricia uh, tendencies last year, <laughs> uh, not playing people. Well, he knows what in he their wants proper in his roles, offense, you, you know. know. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, and he may have just had guys in front of him that was, you know. Well, he had Cole Komet in front role. of him. Yes, that okay. you know. I mean, we can ask Val about all those Notre Dame tight ends they have on Chicago. So, <laughs> all seventeen of them. I mean, right. you know, so they they seem <laughs> to draft a lot of those Notre Dame tight ends uh, in the in the Windy City. So, uh, I mean. We'll see. I mean, we'll he, see. maybe he can work his way. You know, maybe he's a non-dancing foyer on the team. You know what I'm saying? Right, you know, I right. don't want to see him twerking in the end zone. So, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen him have some straight line speed, though, with, with some of those catches last year. And uh, it's like, wow, he, he didn't get many targets. But mm-hmm. I, I still think he has that ability. Now, will he show that ability and just be a blocking tight end for us? I don't really know. I don't know where he fits. So okay. we'll see how that goes. Okay, right. let's go to that wall of fame because we got to get the show moving today. <laughs> unless you, go, unless you had go. something, Kurt. I'm sorry. No, let's go. Let's go. Wall let's of go, fame. Let's go. Hey, I'm on the wall of fame right now. Let's take a look at the bronze members. We got Detroit Drew, the Midwest Lion, Bubba Bo, uh, John Kapler, Detroit Lions talk with Micro Mike, Zub Z, Trap City Boys Entertainment, our Allen. We have Crystal Wiley, uh, Steve Castillo, Batman of the 313. And the Latino Lion oh, for silver members. We got Nomas J, Jason Portis, Cap Ice Cold, and Gold, Gold Lions. Lions. And to round out, we got the Gold members, baby. You know who we got. We got Barb Croso, North and Ken, Just in the D, Miles Gibbs. We have a new Gold member. We have Larry McQuiston, uh, uh, Randall oh. Flag 606 into the show great takes we have randy prince the Grand iron blitz and you know who it is baby the doctor uh, doctor detroit is always, always in. in you know how we do it hey if you want to become a member of the hall of fame just click the join now button it's down in the description and you will learn how to become a member of the wall of fame and join the channel and all the benefits that come with that being a member of the wall of fame yeah we're going to go into detroit lions on the prowl trivia and here's the question for today guys how many hall of famers do the lions have how many hall of famers do the lions have this includes calvin johnson by the way any guesses uh four nope you had one of the numbers Oh, uh, eight. Nope. No. 14. 14. 14. Wow. wow, we got 14. Yes, right. Alice Karras just went in. I, yeah, yep. man. We yeah. had 13. I mean, we were un- unlucky 13, and then Calvin Johnson makes 14. So the yeah, answer today yeah. is 14 Hall of Famers the Detroit Lions wow. have. There was no winner on Facebook. Guess who won on Twitter? 
Go Lions! Oh, go Lions got it, baby! Congratulations on that yeah. one. Congratulations yeah, that's, on that's that on the Twitter. And that is our Detroit Lions on the Prowl trivia for today. If you want to get in on that, that is on Facebook and Twitter, D-L-O-T-P-14. Or L-O-T-P-14. I can't even find my own Twitter handle. I'm tired today. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> now let's get into what you guys had to say about yesterday's show. What's your comment, cards, baby? Jim, what you got? I got the artist formerly known as PC Payload. He said, I'm in the mm-hmm. garage with like power tools. Ah, building yeah. a new desk and listening to Detroit Lions on the prowl. It doesn't get more manly than this. No, it <laughs> isn't. Dan Campbell would be proud. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, next up, we definitely have. Um, ooh, he had to give me this name. Bosa. I don't Bosa know Lane. what that is either. Bosa, Bosa Lane. Lane. Yeah. Um, dollar sign BTV. Okay. I like all these guys. I like, I think all these guys will play. Uh, that news for us is great to see. Uh, yeah, that's new for a, us. I mean, it is. It, new for we us. don't see yeah. that in Detroit very often. You don't see right. that. <laughs> Uh, he All has right. a look emoji, a hundred percent emoji, and, and the goat. Uh, the goat. So <laughs> I guess he's giving the goat to. Got to be Brad Holmes. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll tell you on that okay. one. Uh, okay. Bosalini dollar sign BTV. There you go. <laughs> yep, yep. Let it. Let us know in the in the comment section. You know, break down the abbreviation so we know what your name is, and we can we can get that squared away. Yeah, that right. could be Boss Illini. I don't know. Boss. <laughs> No, no, probably isn't. We have no idea. Please put it in the comments below because we don't have any idea. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. we don't know. (laughs) Right. Uh, Let's move on to Anthony Poma. Lions had a great draft build from inside out. We have a few new. We have a few pieces to go, but overall heading in the right direction. One hundred, and I agree. I think we all agree that uh, yeah, we are definitely building in the right direction. We're turning in the right direction and. Detroit. No, I'm 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 very happy about that. Verbal Kent says Anton am oh, come on, I can't even talk today. Amon Ronse Brown is gonna ball out for the Detroit Lions. Another great pick. Yeah, I agree with you. I think he starts in the slot. Yep. I yep. like uh Amon Ron St. Brown. All right, Doug Prince 72 says, Kurt, why were you shot? They hated Stafford. We're talking about the local media here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Uh they'll hate golf. Uh, Stafford is now the next Super Bowl. MVP. Basically, if they play for us uh, in the media, we suck. Uh, <laughs> okay. We had a hey, little I, discussion, I, I, too, about uh, when uh, we talked about 97 won the ticket and Doug uh, well, turned us off and I said, you know what? We got to we gotta talk about what we got to talk about, man. You may I mean, not yeah, like them, I but mean, we got to talk about what we got to talk about, dude. I mean, because I have to, you have to, I have to take in as much Lions coverage as possible and that means yep. even outlets I don't like, you know what I'm saying, that I don't typically agree with, but you to find out about the team, you, have, you know, and what different people's takes are on the team, I have to listen to uh, the ticket. I got to listen to even Carlos, even with his bananas takes. Ugh. But I, you, I left. I look at it because I want to know what they're saying and what right. they're thinking right. and how they mm-hmm. think. Yeah, it, it's yeah. but it's right. necessary to do the job. Yep. All right, Philip Buckner, Mike Jones, you from Jackson, Michigan? You look familiar. Great show, fellas. You know what, Philip Buckner do sound familiar. Um. So I think he's from Jackson, Michigan as well. Um, I don't, I don't know, but uh, yeah, I'm from Jackson. It's hometown. I'm four nine two zero two, baby. Um, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, yeah. So Philip, man, maybe we can chalk it up or something, man. Um, you know, it but sounds Jack good. Town. That sounds Jack good. Town. Thank you for your comments today. We're gonna go to the question of the day now. And the question of the day is. What do you think about Carry On Johnson? What do you think about his career as a lion? And what do you think about uh, uh, how the ending is happening right now? Just give me thoughts on Carry On today. So now we come to my favorite part of the show, the dessert with my man, Kurt. All right, so you see it. I am rocking the new Detroit uh, Da Hard Dan podcast shirt. Yay! So Shawnee Jan and I are going to record tonight. Yes. A new episode is coming out 
We can't wait. We're going to break down a lot of Lions news because it's been happening over and over and over mm-hmm. again as some fresh takes because Shawnee J going to give it to you. He going to tell you what he think. And he's, you're going to be like, what? what? But he, he, because he has some takes that sometimes are just kind of like out there, but it is great. He's educated and he Very knows what he's talking about. So tune in to the next episode of the Die Hard Damn Podcast. It'll be coming out tomorrow, but we're recording it tonight. I can't wait to talk to my man, Shiny J, about what's going on with the Lions. Yeah, my final thoughts for today is uh, carry on, my wayward son. Uh, <laughs> have a good future travels and uh, good luck in your future endeavors. Uh, this team is being rebuilt. We have a a model of what we want at wide receiver and a model of what we want at running back. And um, I remember the Denver Broncos, and this is going to be my parting thing. The Denver Broncos had an offensive line that was so good. They would just turn out, you know, a thousand yard rushers and never everybody else would get those guys and they wouldn't do the same thing for their team, but it was because of that right. old line. And I think you can't just stick anyone back there and, and it, you know, and get a thousand yards. But I think that we're going to be into that situation where a running back here will get much more success than he will elsewhere all right man and my final thoughts for the day man is uh it, it just, it's just it's a good feeling in in lions nation man and um i know not all of us um are on board you know there's still a few stafford people who are mad about that and you know so criticize the way that that, that we're building but trust in the process Trust in the the uh, the Trinity, Brad Holmes, John Agnew, or Ray Agnew, and John Dorsey, and they're gonna get it together, man. This is an organization. This is finally a football organization, a football team. They building it the right way, and just you know, just patience and and you know, and temper expectations. Don't 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 go out there and see them like, oh, they lost. Oh, see, it's the same old. It's it's not. It's a rebuild. It's a real rebuild. Just you know. Join the join join the train, man. You know what I'm saying? Sip some Kool-Aid like Jim do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For my final thoughts of the day. It is Thursday. The weekend is almost here. We've got the Friday free for all tomorrow. So make sure you tune in tomorrow at 11 a.m. for free for all Fridays or Friday free for all. We call it two different things, but it's the same thing. You know what it needs to be 11 o'clock right here on our YouTube channel. And you know. Join the channel, subscribe, you know, become part of the family because we don't have fans. We don't have viewers. We got family and it's all love right here on Detroit Alliance on the Prowl. And if you don't know, we're on Belly Up Sports. So go over to that website. It is revamped. Looks nice. Very streamlined. Uh, And check out, check us out over there. And you also can check out some great, tremendous articles by some talented writers over there. You got so many different sports. You got fantasy. You got sports betting. All you, whatever your sports needs, you can get it over there on BellyUpSports.com. And if you're gonna buy some Lions gear, like your boy Kurt, at Fanatics.com, a portion of the proceeds from that link go to help us grow this channel. You're gonna buy it anyway, so you might as well get it from Fanatics, baby. Hey, it's right there. And the rewards program: the more Lions gear that you buy. You earn free rewards and free gear from Fanatics. So join that My Rewards program over there. Fanatics, it's a really good program because your boy Curtin got some free things. I can't even lie to you. All right. <laughs> so it is Thursday. The weekend is almost here. Uh, grind it out one more day, two more days at work. So go in there, finish your lunch. You know what I'm saying? Go on, sip, the, sip your Lions Kool-Aid with the rest of your meal and go about your day and grind it out because the weekend is almost here, baby. So enjoy yourself. You know, cheers. So, hey, you know who we are. We are Detroit Lions on the prowl. You're a home for Detroit Lions news and rumors. And as you go about the rest of your day, you know what you got to do, baby. You got to boss up. Ball out and be the best version of you that you can be. For my fellas, Mike and Jim, this is Kurt Steele, and we will holler at you real soon.